If there's one thing you know about Rhode Island, it's probably that it's very, very small. In fact, 622 different counties, nearly one-fifth of all the counties in the United States, take up more land than Rhode Island. The state at its length is 48 miles, that's barely more than the average American commute to work. Despite this, the state packs a large punch. It's the second most densely populated state in the country, has hundreds of miles of coastline, and is home to more people than seven other states, including Alaska, a state with an area 400 times the size of it. Revolving around the 39th largest urban area in the country, which takes up nearly half of its land area, it's one of the closest things the U.S. has, other than the District of Columbia, to a city-state. And on top of all that, it's played a crucial role in the formation and history of the United States. There is truly no state like Rhode Island, the 13th place I will cover in the U.S. Explained, a 56-part series on every state, territory, and federal district in the country by order of admission. Hello and welcome to That Is Interesting. I'm your host, Carter. This is the U.S. Explained, episode 13. Rhode Island. Most of Rhode Island sits in the Kevin Climate Classification's humid subtropical climate zone, with hot summers and mild winters. It's up north, but the ocean helps mediate its temperatures. Rhode Island is nicknamed the Ocean State, a fitting name for a state surrounding Narragansett Bay, which cuts deep into the small state's interior and home to four major islands. Out of the state's total area, 14% is water and has developed a strong maritime culture home to dozens of lighthouses, nearly 400 miles of coastline, a bay always filled with boats, and delicious seafood. Despite its name, Rhode Island is not entirely an island. It's home to a number of islands, but most of its land sits on the mainland U.S. Its name comes from Aquidneck Island, the largest of the state's islands, which was formerly known as Rhode Island. There are two competing theories on how Aquidneck came to be known as Rhode Island. One was that it was named for Rhodes, the famous island in Greece, the other is that it was named Red Island by the Dutch, or Rote Island in Dutch. Either or both of these could have been how Aquidneck became known as Rhode Island, but the name came to signify the whole state with the founding of Rhode Island as a colony. It was formed from the joining of four different colonial settlements, two on the island and two on the mainland, agricultural towns known as the Providence Plantations. Plantations at the time just meant farming communities and didn't yet have the association with slavery it would later have. Because of this, the colony became known as the Colony of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, and the state took the same name. Most people, however, just called it Rhode Island for short, and the name came to signify the state, whereas the island it took its name from became known as Aquidneck Island. In 2020, voters decided to change the name to the state of Rhode Island. Rhode Island was what everyone called it anyways, and even though the original name didn't refer to slavery, most people decided that having the word plantations in the state name just had a pretty terrible connotation. Rhode Island has, in my opinion, one of the best state flags in the country. It has a white background with a golden anchor surrounded by a circle of stars, and a blue ribbon underneath reading the word hope, the state's motto. It's a simple and memorable design, and represents well both the state's maritime history and culture, and role as a center of religious freedom, and I think it's a great flag all around, really up there in my opinion in terms of the best state flags in the country. Rhode Island is home to 1.097 million people, ranking it at number 43 out of the states in terms of population. Puerto Rico, which is a U.S. territory, has a population three times the size of it. However, it's still home to more people than Montana, Delaware, South Dakota, North Dakota, Alaska, Vermont, and Wyoming. All of which take up more land than Rhode Island, in some cases much, much more. In terms of land area, it is the smallest state in the entire U.S., taking up just 1,034 square miles, or 2,678 square kilometers, one of just two states that takes up less land than Puerto Rico. 
When you consider how small Rhode Island is, nearly four times smaller than the Big Island of Hawaii, the fact that it has over a million people living within its borders is far more impressive, and that gives it the second highest population density in the entire country. Home to 1,061 people per square mile or 410 per square kilometer, Rhode Island has a higher concentration of people living within its borders than any other state in the country besides New Jersey. It sits in the northeastern United States and is one of the six states part of the geographic and cultural region known as New England. It borders just two other states. Connecticut lies directly to its west, and Massachusetts to its north and east, and the Atlantic Ocean sits to its south. In addition, it shares a water border with New York. The Empire State is surprisingly close. Fisher's Island, which is part of New York, sits just two miles off Rhode Island's westernmost point, and Block Island, which is part of Rhode Island, is just 14 miles off the tip of Long Island at Montauk and pretty isolated from the rest of the state, home to a very small population. Rhode Island has a very interesting shape. The border with Connecticut, save for a section by the ocean that follows a river, is pretty much a straight north-south line, as is the northern border with Massachusetts. The eastern border with Massachusetts is where things get interesting. It weaves around the northern end of the Narragansett Bay, leaving a thin strip of Rhode Island, sometimes only a mile or two wide, between it and the water. Near Fall River, Massachusetts, it crosses a section of the bay, leaving a pretty significant chunk of the state cut off by land from the rest. Sitting right on the coast and taking up so little area, Rhode Island mostly consists of flat land and gentle rolling hills. Other than Delaware, it's the first state I've covered so far that has no mountains of any kind to speak of. Its highest point, Jeremoth Hill, is only 812 feet above sea level. For the most part, the western half of the state is rural and nearly entirely covered in forests, whereas the eastern half of the state, on and around Narragansett Bay, is urbanized, consisting of Providence, its suburbs, and a few other towns that lie within its orbit. The largest and most important river in the state is the Blackstone. It flows south from Massachusetts into the northern end of Narragansett Bay, where known as the Providence River, it grows significantly wider, essentially becoming an arm of the bay. Providence sits at this meeting point and is the largest and only major urban area in the state, stretching across both sides of Narragansett Bay for quite a while. Because Rhode Island is so small and compact, every city and town in the state, other than New Shoreham, located on Block Island, is either a suburb or satellite city of Providence. The farthest Rhode Island town from it westerly is only a 45 minute drive away. In addition, Boston is just an hour's drive from the city, and the suburbs of Providence overlap significantly at times with the suburbs of the US's 10th largest urban area. Providence itself is far from small. With 1.19 million residents in its urban area, it's the 39th largest in the country, home to more people than Jacksonville, but less than Charlotte. You might have noticed that this actually gives Providence and its suburbs a greater population than Rhode Island as a whole. This is due to the fact that many of the city's suburbs stretch into Massachusetts, which is at times less than two miles from the Providence city limits. Narragansett Bay is the state's dominant geographic feature. Stretching nearly two-thirds of the way into the state, it's a huge bay, an excellent natural harbor, and has been instrumental in shaping Rhode Island. The bay is dotted with many islands, but is home to three major ones that take up much of it, making it essentially a collection of various channels that cut into the state. In the northwest of the bay is Prudence Island, in the southwest, Connecticut Island, and taking up the eastern section is the largest and most populous of the state's islands, Aquidneck Island, home to the famous city of Newport. In addition, nine miles off the Atlantic coast sits Block Island, which sits between Long Island and Martha's Vineyard, forming a body of water called Block Island Sound. I don't typically talk too much about counties in the US Explained because each state usually has so many of them. Rhode Island, however, only has five. They're tied for the second least with Hawaii. Only Delaware has less with three. Providence County takes up the northern part of the state and is home to Providence as well as suburbs like Cranston and Pawtucket as well as satellite cities like Woonsocket, and is by far the most populous, with 658,000 inhabitants. Directly to the south is Kent County, with 170,000 people, and home to suburbs like Warwick. Tiny Bristol County, which interestingly borders Bristol County, Massachusetts, has 50,000 people, and in terms of area, is the third smallest county in the entire country, consisting of a peninsula jutting into the bay. The rest of mainland Rhode Island to the south of Kent County, along with Block Island, is part of Washington County with 130,000 people. It includes some of the farther suburbs of Providence, as well as coastal towns like Westerly and Narragansett. 
Finally, Newport County consists of the islands in Narragansett Bay as well as the eastern chunk of the state that's disconnected from the rest. What is now Rhode Island was home to a number of indigenous peoples. The Narragansett and Nahagansett lived in much of the state, in the eastern Nahantic and Pequot in the south, the Nipmuc in the north, and the Wampanoag and Poconocket in the northeast, and the Manassean on Block Island. With the arrival of European colonists in the Americas, they brought with them diseases that the indigenous people had not yet been exposed to, such as smallpox. These diseases ended up decimating the continent's indigenous peoples, killing 90% of them. Those that survived often died at the hands of the colonists as European settlements pushed further westward, encroaching on their land, and pushing those that survived west. Today, out of the eight major native peoples that called Rhode Island home, only the Narragansett have federal recognition, though many descendants of the region's native people that survived lived in Rhode Island today. What became Rhode Island was founded by religious refugees who'd been banished from the harsh Puritan society of the nearby Massachusetts Bay Colony. An English preacher named Roger Williams, who'd preached in Salem, was controversial among the Puritans and a fierce defender of separation of church and state, as well as religious freedom. In 1636, the theocratic government of Massachusetts Bay banished Williams from the colony. He fled in exile with some of his followers to Narragansett Bay, where he bought a section of land from the Narragansett people that he named the Providence Plantations. A number of other religious leaders, namely Anne Hutchinson, who were also controversial at the time and banned from Massachusetts Bay, followed in Williams' footsteps and left for Aquidneck Island, where they founded the town of Portsmouth and others later split off to found Newport, also on the island. Another religious dissident from Massachusetts, Samuel Gorton, founded the settlement of Warwick to the south of Providence. Their neighbors, the colonies of Saybrook and New Haven, which would eventually become Connecticut, and Plymouth and Massachusetts Bay, which would become Massachusetts, were strict Puritan colonies that disapproved of the settlements around Narragansett Bay that were founded on religious freedom. These strong societal and religious differences from the Puritan colonies, coupled with the desire of their neighbors to expand their territory and put the settlements already hemmed in on all sides at risk. In 1643, for example, their four Puritan neighbors formed a closer union, the New England Confederation, leaving their settlements further isolated. That same year, troops from Massachusetts Bay marched into Warwick and forcefully captured its founder, Samuel Gordon, and a number of his followers, though they were later released. The ever-present danger from their neighbors made these dissident settlements eager to receive a colonial charter. In 1663, Roger Williams received this charter from British King Charles II, unifying the two mainland settlements of Providence and Warwick, known as the Providence Plantations, with Newport and Portsmouth, the two settlements in what was then called Rhode Island. As such, the new colony was called the Colony of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, and later commonly became referred to as just Rhode Island. Much of King Philip's War, a brutal war that saw thousands of Native Americans and English colonists die, was fought in and around Rhode Island between the New England Confederation, which Rhode Island was not a part of, and the Wampanoag and other allied tribes. The war, brought to a head by the fast growth of English colonies like Massachusetts Bay pushing against Wampanoag territory, became a full-scale war between the Puritans and the Wampanoag to push each other out of the region. The bloody conflict saw dozens of English and Wampanoag settlements burned to the ground, and almost all of New England's native people killed or pushed completely out, opening the region for further colonial expansion. Unsurprisingly, Massachusetts and Connecticut also used the war as an attempt to seize some of Rhode Island's land. The Rhode Island colony was small but influential. While many of the 13 colonies were founded by those fleeing religious persecution, they often didn't show any tolerance themselves for members of other religions and denominations. Rhode Island was a strong exception. Founded on religious freedom and separation of church and state, it quickly became a diverse safe haven for members of often persecuted religious groups, home to large numbers of Baptists, Quakers, Catholics, and Jews. The first synagogue and the first Baptist church on the North American continent were both located in Rhode Island. However, the colony also had a central role in the history of slavery, home to twice the number of enslaved people per capita as most of its neighbors, and dominating the transatlantic slave trade. Enslaved people were taken from West Africa by colonial merchants to North America, mostly the South and the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, they were forced to grow sugar and process it into molasses, both of which were then shipped to Rhode Island, where they were processed into rum at dozens of different rum distilleries located in the colony. The rum was then sold all over the world, including West Africa, where it was often traded for more enslaved people. 
While slavery itself is thought of in the United States as a mostly southern phenomenon, and the South is where it primarily occurred, the brutal international industry of the slave trade itself was based out of Newport, and that's where its profits mostly flowed. One-sixth of all slave ships in the 13 colonies were owned by Rhode Island merchants, and 60% of all the ships that made the voyage to West Africa set sail from there. During the American Revolution, while the Boston Tea Party gets a lot of attention, Rhode Islanders actually burned a British ship, the HMS Gatsby, into the sea in Providence a whole year before. On May 4, 1776, they became the first of the 13 colonies to declare independence, doing so two months before the colonies collectively did so with the signing of the Declaration of Independence. After the war and the failures of the Articles of Confederation, though, Rhode Island was skeptical about ratifying the Constitution and joining the United States. They had a number of issues with the Constitution, but their most prominent was the lack of a Bill of Rights. Specifically, they were concerned that it did not explicitly protect freedom of religion, which had been a core tenet of Rhode Island since its founding. By this point, all 12 of the other colonies that had declared their independence from Britain had ratified the Constitution, and many threatened Rhode Island with tariffs if they didn't do so. In the end, though, the Bill of Rights was written, and its First Amendment specifically protected freedom of religion. On May 29, 1790, three and a half years after Delaware did so, becoming the first state, Rhode Island ratified the U.S. Constitution, the last of the 13 colonies to do so. They became the 13th state in the Union. While all the other states have covered so far were breakaway British colonies, this marks a turning point in the series. From here onward, many of the upcoming states were colonized not by Europeans who arrived on ships, but by American settlers pushing westward into Native American territory. Because this series moves through history chronologically, there are a lot of interesting similarities between states with episodes near one another, both in terms of their physical location within the country, as well as their history, population, economies, and culture. Every state I've covered so far, for example, has been in the eastern United States, all but Pennsylvania sitting on the Atlantic coast, and it sits just around 40 miles from Delaware Bay. As the series continues, we're going to begin progressing inland, following a similar path to the historical settlement of the U.S., Rhode Island quickly became an industrial powerhouse. Though the Industrial Revolution began in Britain, it spread to the United States, helping the young country become an industrial center. The heart of this early industry, in fact the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution in the United States, was in Rhode Island at Slater Mill. The mill, located in Pawtucket, now as northern suburb of Providence, sits on a waterfall in the Blackstone River, and its revolutionary use of water to power a mill, the first of its kind in the United States, led many other mills to spring up throughout the Blackstone Valley in Rhode Island and Massachusetts. During the early years of the United States, the Blackstone Valley was the country's industrial heartland, and from it the Industrial Revolution spread to the Merrimack Valley and the rest of New England and the country. Providence was initially one of the largest cities in the country, but as the decades progressed, other American cities overtook it, even as it continued to grow. Rhode Island remained with the Union during the Civil War and was the first Union state to send in troops to serve in the war. After the war, much of the United States began to industrialize. Rhode Island had already been a center of textile production for the last hundred years and was already a well-established manufacturing state. Jewelry and silverware production also became major industries. As the growth in industry around the country brought massive waves of immigration, mostly from Europe to the US, Rhode Island saw significant new arrivals. Many of these immigrants were Catholic, fleeing poverty in Europe, and drawn to both Rhode Island's job opportunities in the mills and tradition of religious freedom. French Canadians came south from Quebec, and more immigrants poured into the state from Italy, Ireland, and Portugal. At the same time, located not far from major cities like Boston and New York, Newport, which had always drawn the wealthy, became the playground of America's rich industrialists who built mansions and summer homes there, the most famous of which is the Breakers, built by the Vanderbilt family. There's still many mansions located in Newport, and even some abandoned ones which have completely fallen into disrepair and are really interesting to look at. In later decades, the state began to transition away from manufacturing to service industries like healthcare, tourism, and education. Organized crime and corruption were major problems, epitomized by Buddy Cianci, the mayor of Providence. Cianci served as mayor for nine years, but was forced to resign after being arrested for kidnapping someone. After that, though, he ran again and won, serving for another 11 years until an FBI investigation uncovered an incredibly corrupt mayoral administration, getting him for racketeering, extortion, and a number of other crimes. 
Rhode Island revolves around Providence. It's the state's only major city, and the urban area centered around it takes up most of the state's eastern half. In fact, wherever you are within the state, you're really never more than an hour's drive from downtown Providence, which is the north end of Narragansett Bay and the south end of the Blackstone Valley. With an urban area stretching into Massachusetts that gives it a larger urban area population than Rhode Island itself, it's home to 1.19 million people, making it the 39th largest urban area in the United States and the second largest in New England, surpassed only by nearby Boston, which it sits very close to. I've spent some time in Providence and I really enjoyed it. The city feels old and historic, like many cities and small towns feel throughout New England. It's home to brick-lined streets, old churches, and beautiful homes dotting the hillsides. Though new high-rises are coming up, even its downtown feels like you've stepped back into the past, home to older buildings tightly packed together around winding streets. Its tallest building, and the tallest in the state, is commonly known as the Superman Building because it looks like the headquarters of the Daily Planet, and it was built in 1928. Most American cities, on the other hand, have skylines dominated by far newer buildings. The city is home to a beautiful river walk that cuts through downtown, and it's also home to a number of different colleges and universities all throughout the city. Brown University is one of just eight schools in the elite and renowned Ivy League, making Rhode Island the last state I'll cover in the series that's home to an Ivy League school. Just a couple blocks away is the Rhode Island School of Design, or RISD, arguably the best art school in the United States. In addition to being its only major city, Providence is also Rhode Island's capital, and is home to one of my favorite state capitol buildings that I've ever had a chance to visit, topped with a large marble dome, one of the largest on earth, surrounded by four smaller domes and sitting on a hill overlooking downtown. In terms of race, Rhode Island is not super diverse. 76% of the state's population is white, 12% are Latino, 5% are black, and 3% are Asian. However, despite its low racial diversity, many Rhode Islanders trace their ancestry back to a number of different countries, which have all influenced the state in its history, culture, and traditions. Irish and Italian Americans are the most common, which makes sense. Many Italian immigrants settled in nearby New York, and many Irish flocked not far away to Boston. Rhode Island, and across the border in southeastern Massachusetts, is also the center of the U.S.'s Portuguese population. Bristol County and the county of the same name in Massachusetts are the only counties in the country where Portuguese people are the dominant ancestry group. 8% of the state's population are Portuguese Americans, giving Rhode Island the largest Portuguese population per capita in the country. Many trace their ancestry to the Azores, where whaling ships from Narragansett Bay would stop and hire locals as crew members. Most Latinos in Rhode Island are Dominican or Puerto Rican, and the state has the highest percentage of Dominicans of any U.S. state, with 5% of Rhode Islanders being Dominican Americans. Because of all the immigration to the state from predominantly Catholic areas like Portugal, Italy, Ireland, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and Quebec, Rhode Island is now the most Catholic state in the entire U.S., in one of just four states, along with nearby Massachusetts, New York, and New Jersey, where Catholics make up the largest religious group. Dell's Lemonade is an ocean state staple. The tiny state is home to dozens of locations. Coffee milk is also a common drink in the state. It's where you mix milk with a coffee-flavored syrup. Many people in the state call what most Americans would describe as a water fountain or drinking fountain a bubbler. There's really only one other state that does this, Wisconsin, and I'm not sure how the use of the word started or if there's a connection between the two states that say it, but it's a unique part of the state's dialect. Lots of people in the comments also mention this roadside attraction known as the Big Blue Bug, a giant termite on top of a pest control company. Popular show Family Guy is set in the fictional Rhode Island town of Quahog. The largest newspaper in the state is the Providence Journal, and its busiest airport is the Rhode Island TF Green International Airport near Providence. Rhode Island has no major league sports teams, and locals tend to support teams based in Boston, which makes sense as the city is only an hour from Providence. Foxborough, where the New England Patriots play, though located in Massachusetts, is only 7 miles from Rhode Island, so they very much feel like a local team. Large companies housed in the state include the toy manufacturing giant Hasbro, located in Pawtucket, and CVS, based out of Woonsocket. No presidents were born in or based their political careers out of Rhode Island. Politically, it is a solidly blue state, the seventh bluest overall. It has a Cook Partisan Voting Index of D plus 8, which means that in a given year, the Democratic Party tends to do 8% better in Rhode Island than in the country on average. Currently, Rhode Island's two representatives in the House, its two senators, Sheldon Whitehouse and Jack Reed, and its governor, Dan McKee, are all Democrats. That is it for Rhode Island. 
I want to give a big thank you to everyone who's already joined my Patreon. Through it, you can access different things such as behind the scenes videos, early access to maps I create, an exclusive Discord Q&A with me, ad free content, and shout outs to my videos. Please be sure to check out the TII store where you'll be able to purchase all sorts of official that is interesting products and merchandise, including shirts, hoodies, embroidered beanies, masks, mugs, embroidered backpacks, laptop stickers, and sleeves, and so on. One of the products that I'm most excited about are these limited edition frame state prints that commemorate each video in the US Explained. These are available as soon as the corresponding US Explained video is uploaded, but only 10 of each will be released, so please make sure to buy one before they go out of stock. Right now, you'll be able to buy a Rhode Island state print, so please click the link in the description and go pay a visit to the TII store. Also, please subscribe to my brother's channel, Quinn the Cameraman. He made the great intro at the beginning of this video that I'll use in all the US Explained videos, so go show him some support. I tried to be pretty thorough with this video, but I know there were definitely some things I missed as there was a lot to talk about. I want to give a big thank you to everyone from Rhode Island who helped give me information for this video, leaving detailed and informative comments on YouTube as well as Discord. I truly would not have been able to make this video without all your help. My next video in this series will be a really interesting one, the first of just six times in this series that will cover a place that isn't a state, the country's only federal district, the District of Columbia. I've actually had the privilege of being able to live in DC for a short time, but I'll still need all the help I can get. If you're from Washington DC, please respond to my community post or my comment here, or leave something in the Discord server to let me know what you'd like to see included about your home city. I really appreciate the well over 600 of you who have already joined my Discord server. If you haven't joined the Discord server yet, it's a great place to continue conversations about the topics discussed in these videos, interact with fellow viewers, and help provide information about upcoming states in this series. It's a great community, and we do fun stuff like geography game nights, live podcasts, and so on. I'll put links to both the Patreon and the Discord in the comments. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, that is interesting.